Hey guys, what is up? My name is Mpom and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time I'm actually pretty excited to show you guys this one. So let's get started. To get started, I'm going to open up my reference image. Shift A and click background. Then locate your image. I'm going to select that and scale it up a bit. To trace out the form of this thing, we're going to use a cylinder. So Shift A and add in a cylinder. Scale that down a bit until it matches the edges of our reference. Then tap into edit mode and basically the process which I'm going to use here is a process of just extruding down, extruding up and scaling. That's pretty much the whole process. But I'll walk you through just in case you're curious. I'm adding some edge loops over here. Then later on, I want to select these edge loops and extrude them up. So just keep adding those where you want to extrude those faces. Now select those faces. Then press E, S and Shift Z. Right click if you're okay with the extrusion. All right, now time to move on to this bottom parts. I'm going to grab these bottom parts and extrude them down in the top edges and extrude them up. Scale that down and extrude again, scale it down. What we're trying to do here is just basically trace out the edges of this thing. It's pretty repetitive, so just bear with me here. To round off those edges, go to select and click sharp edges. Then press Control B and they should bevel out their edges a bit. And this just makes sure that the model is not very sharp but yeah more realistic so i'm going to continue modeling this thing um this is the switch i believe so same process as before we're going to extrude and grab out these edges scale it down and extrude it up again and we're going to try as best as possible to trace out the form of the switch i've increased the pace of this video a bit just to make sure that you're not, you know, bored because as I'm saying, this is quite a repetitive task. It's a matter of extruding, scaling and, you know, just grabbing vertices, manipulating them to make sure that they fit the reference. To model the globe, I use the sphere. So just shift A and add in a sphere. Position that properly. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode. And I want to remove these top parts of the sphere. From there on, just select that. All right, so from there on, I'm gonna extrude that up, scale that down, extrude that again, and just scale that down. So for these parts, you're just gonna add in some edge loops and scale those up. You know, once again, same process as before. Just gonna add in some more loops here, and scale, and yeah, we just wanna make sure that our forms are kind of proportionate to our reference image. If you've noticed, um, a bulb kind of has this middle section towards it where the, I think the electricity is generated and it, it just, yeah, you know what, I'm not even going to try to explain it, but this little part's over here. To model that, I once again use this cylinder and same process as before guys you know like this is a very repetitive geez, repetitive process so just grab these vertices extrude them down extrude that again and scale that up I had a little trouble modeling the electricity yeah the, the the part that actually generates lights so the solution that i came up with was to use a circle and with the circle i was just going to use the vertices to kind of trace out the basic outline of those sparks you don't have to model the whole spark just like a certain portion and then put a array modifier and that should model out the rest of the top parts. From that I was going to use a skin modifier to give it some thickness. 
the others blob the over here just press ctrl a and that should scale that down a bit as you can see so just keep doing that until you find a, a thickness that you feel that is okay check out some reference on the internet i think you'll find some really interesting bulbs you know some of these have some very different textures you know a whole different vintage feel to it so that's what i wanted to do just like i did with the previous box i wanted to do the same with these ones just add in a skin modifier and scale that down here's a little trick that i learned while making this if you want to make a chord i added in a circle here and i'm going to shift d to duplicate this and move it to the left what i want to do here is i want the pivot points not the pivot point i want the origin to be in the exact middle of these two then add in a screw modifier and if you play with the screw and iterations this is the effect that you should have so just play along with this screw value and the iterations until you finally have you know a lengthy cable that you're happy with so as you can see that's the cable so i'm just going to place that properly and increase those iterations from here i think it's time to move over to the texturing so i'm just going to split the screen up and i'm going to go into the shader editor selecting my bulb i want to turn the transmission all the way up and this should give me a glass look grab the roughness and drag it down all the way to zero and now we have a glass that's completely clear moving over to the bulb holder this is kind of an easy material to make so just click new shift a and search for geometry then we're going to add in a color ramp feed the pointsness into the color ramp this is what it looks right now it doesn't look like much so in order to do that we're going to have to tweak these two values until we find you know a nice contrast what i want to do here is i just want to highlight those edges to kind of mimic some scratches so let's add in a mix node and we're just going to drop it in there set that to multiply and now we're going to look for a noise texture just to distort this um texture you know this is what it looks like when you scale up that noise level i think it looks fine like that yeah, and then I'm just gonna drag it in like that so if you play with these values over here it should just kind of break up that texture plugging that in into the base color and just drag the roughness down you know you now how a bulb holder looks like right and also increase the metal all the way to one I think that's looking all right now let's just play a bit with this color I want to add in like a secondary color that's not too visible but just breaks down the texture so i'm just going to duplicate that and set that to mix and i'm going to use this as a factor all right so now if we change this bottom color it should give us you know a secondary color that we're looking for and i still want this color to be dark so just just pick you know any color that you okay with Let's move on to the actual sparks. It's kind of a tricky one to find out on your own, but yeah, let me show you what I did. Delete the default shader and add in an emission shader. Plug that in and search for the layer weight node material. We're gonna grab the facing and drag it in to the color. And between that, we're gonna add in a color ramp and drag that right there in between. Select this black color and we're going to change it to something like an orangish color just to mimic the color of the bulb. Grab the last one, grab the last one and change the color to a yellowish type. Something like this should be fine. Then lastly, change the strength to a value of 20. Now looking at the globe, it's pretty much complete. I think it's time to move on to the cameras. To be able to see anything in the camera, you, you're gonna need some light. So, as someone once said, let there be light. I'm gonna add in an environment texture, connect that to the background, and I'm just gonna locate a texture which I want. I found this one on textures.com. 
I thought that it had that that vibe which I was looking for. So yeah, but you can use anything. Chart Texture Haven if you know <laughs> you're looking for something free. Um, yeah, I find that they have some really interesting textures on there. But this one worked out fine. Another trick to do with these sort of things is to increase the focal length. If you can increase it to a value about 200 or I don't know 150, you can get a nice shallow depth of field. So what I want to do here is I want to place in an empty which will allow me to set that as a focal point in my camera. So by selecting that empty in the focal point, it will allow me to, you know, get a specific focus on the the lights. And you know, the nice thing about this is you can just move around that empty and the camera will automatically focus on it. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. What I'm doing here is I want to establish some leading lines, you know, in case you don't know what that is. This is just a line that, you know, guides your eye throughout the composition. This will make our boring scene much more interesting. So yeah, try it out. To enhance that illusion or depth, I I went into the top view and I wanted to have you know some cables to be longer and some of them shorter. But I wanted to have that in an arc motion, just to I don't know for that visual appeal. I think maybe if you go into the camera view and just strategically place those, just move them around, it would be a bit better. I struggled a bit with this one, but. In the end, I finally got something which I wanted. With that out of the way, it's time to move on to the lighting. For the key lights, I used an area lamp, which, you know, I kind of noticed after that. This is an outdoor soon scene, so you can get away with the sun lamp. But yeah, you know what? I struggled with this one a bit. I find that, you know, lighting this scene specifically, it was kind of challenging for me, but I enjoyed it. The simple way to do lighting is to have a backlight, a strong backlight, a key light, and a soft overhead light, or I don't know, just a soft light that's just gonna fill in the shadows. And that's what I did with this scene. When I was done, I found out that uh, I wasn't too impressed with the scene. So I wanted to add in some nature, some, some leaves, some branches, to it just to break out the forms and give some subtle interest so i chose to put one in the foreground you know a little branch in the foreground right next to the camera and i wanted to put some in the middle and more at the back if that makes sense you know this is an outdoor scene so of course you're gonna see some branches some leaves it's not just gonna be you know these bulbs hanging in mid-air yeah so <laughs> i found these ones on where did i find them i found them on blendswap.com it was just a tree that i found so i took the leaves and imported that and this is what i'm using right now so yeah after a lot of trial and error i finally had what i was looking for i gave it a render and this is what the scene looks like so so overall I'm happy with it, but yeah, we could do some improvements to it. So let's do some composition, some post-production. Let's just give out some, you know, little refinements onto the image. So yeah, let me show you my process. For the globes, I wanted to add in some glare, you know, some slight glows. So I'm going to change the streaks of the glare to fog glow, then change the mix value to one just so you can see what we're dealing with so this is what it looks like right now i think it's okay um so let's just duplicate that and let's work on the second layer of glow i want this one to be much bigger you know to cast a much bigger glow and then the other one on top to be a smaller glow see so that's how it looks like and i think we can play with the threshold just to control you know how much glow we want and yeah really this is what i had so like to mix in these two things you're gonna need to shift a and add in a mix connect those two and change the blending mode to add and that's what it looks like all right so we've successfully mixed our two 
um, components. Let's duplicate that and now let's mix it with our composition. And this is what it should look like. See, already looks much better. All right, now let's get to work on with the color grading. So just shift A and add in a color correction. And what I want to do is I want to add in some saturation. So let's lift the, the green values and just make it a bit darker, you know, to make it contrasty. And over here in the middle, I'm going to turn it to sort of like an orange yellowish. Not too much, just a little bit. Something like that should be okay. And yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. And with the gain, I'm going to turn it to blue. All right, I think that looks fine. Yeah, just play around with these values, you know. Um, it's all up to you which different colors you want. From here, the next step, what I want to do is I want to add in some vignette to the edges. So shift A and search for an ellipse mask. It should be right there in the bottom. And I'm just going to put that over there. Shift B to duplicate our mix node and change the blending mode to multiply. This is what it looks like right now. So just play with the width and the height. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to blur the edges of this. So shift A and add in a blur. And play with the X and Y value. I use usually use a high number like 300 or 250. And it's just going to blur some of our edges. And you can play with the, the width and height just to control the darkness of the edges. All right. I think I'm OK with something like this. So just now grab our node from the blur and connect it with our multiply node and we have got ourselves a nice vignette. You can play with the factor, you know, decrease it, increase it just to control those edges, you know, how much we want that um, vignette to pop out. All right, now for some extra pop, shift A and add in a lens distortion. This is just gonna add some slight imperfection. Change the distort value to a low number like 0.1 and check fit. This is going to make sure that our edges are, um, you know, they're not black but scaled up. And change the distortion to a low value as well. To something like 0 0.01. And another thing that you can do, you don't have to do this, but I just love doing it for my scenes. I feel like it just gives it that that film look you know so yeah in your lens distortion node check the glitter checkbox what this is gonna do is it's gonna add in some slight noise into your scene i think it looks nice yeah and you know that's pretty much it that's the whole tutorial make sure to subscribe to my channel i release some new content on a regular so yeah you don't want to miss that Otherwise, this is me, Mpovukea, and I'll see you in the next episode.